Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. If you're new, welcome. We are a book club uh, where we talk about a volume, an arc, or a story that either ourselves or a viewer has chosen. Uh, and if you're a regular here, welcome back. Lovely to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, my name's Scott from the channel Scott Shelf, and I'm joined by just one co-host today. It is Shane from Dawn of Comics. Ahoy, hoy. There he is. Uh, you will notice that Philip isn't here, and he has decided that um, sport is more important than the nerd herd, and he is not joining us. But he has recorded some clips for us um, for us to play on his thoughts throughout throughout the day. Um, so today we are going to be talking about Saga Volume Two, written by Brian K. Vaughan, and the art has been done. Uh, masterfully, I, I might say, by Fiona Staples uh, from 2003, from Image, and uh, so pretty cool. 2013, sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, buddy. Let's have a quick look at uh, seeing who's here so far. So we've got Liam, Heidi Ho, thank you for coming. Yeah. And we've got Dominic as well, the comic book report. Hello all, thank you for joining. I can see the rest of you watching, but you're not commenting. <laughs> Get involved. There's two of us here today. We need all the chat we can get. And I understand that people aren't here because the football's on, but it's about to end soon. But that's it. Here we go. This week in Metropolis, they popped in. Evening, guys. Thank you. Uh, Comics of the World. This isn't sequel month. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, this was Dean's last pick. So, uh, yeah. So this is thanks to Dean. Uh, this was, uh, yeah. <laughs> This this was this was the book that Dean chose, and to be honest, I've been excited to read it for a long time. Glenn as well, he's in saying hi, Scott. Hi, Shane. Um, if you do enjoy what we're talking about with this book, then uh, you can go ahead in the, in the description, click the Amazon link, and go and buy it. Then we'll get a little bit of money, and that will go all to you in the viewer's choice. And if you're listening to us on the podcast, and you think hmm, this live show sounds pretty fun, then do go ahead and join us on YouTube every Wednesday at half past nine uh, in the UK or the other time zones that are displayed in the description of the podcast of wherever you're listening from. So, yes, we got some more people jumping in. we got Connie. Bonjour. And, uh, <laughs> there we go. This is what we need. So, Dominic, he's stretching his keyboard finger muscles to help contribute to today's discussion. Could you tell me where the, the keyboard muscle is? In the fingers, is that... <laughs> so when I'm online, this I I don't do much typing with my hands. No, no. How do you type? It's thumbs, isn't it? Mm. I'm not a computer. It's thumbs no. now, so I don't. Yeah. Like, these these are useless now. Just put mittens <laughs> on me, and I'm good to go. <laughs> and we've got the comic room joining in as well. Hello, thank you for joining. Right. So we're talking about saga. I've said enough. We've done the introductions. Everyone's here, sat down, ready to go. Uh, I'm not starting off because I've been talking for the last four minutes. So, Shane, would you like to start the chat off? I would, but we probably should start with a synopsis. <laughs> yes, I have that right here. Guys, please bear in mind, I've had a hell of a week, a hell of a day. I've been really busy. I haven't had time to actually think of what I will say. So I'm just going to read it from the back. I really hope you don't mind. So the synopsis of this book is... Saga is the sweeping tale of one young family fighting to find their place in the universe. Thanks to her star-crossed parents, uh, Marco and Alana, newborn baby Hazel has already survived lethal assassins, rampaging armies, and horrific monsters. But in the cold vastness of outer space, the little girl encounters her strangest adventure yet. Grandparents. Dun-dun-dun. So yeah, it, it is, it is, this is basically a big family story, isn't it? Yes. That synopsis, though, could have been on the first book because that's where the first volume ended with them meeting the grandparents. <laughs> yeah, like, it doesn't true. mention anything that happens in this book whatsoever. They copy and paste. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what did you think? What did you think of the book? Um, I liked it a lot better than the first volume. Um, as you know, I was, I'm not a massive fan of this kind of writing slash art with the vulgar, ooh, the vulgar... Every issue has something vulgar in it. It does. You, you it can, does, yeah. And... And nine times out of ten, it's not really needed. 
Um, it's just there for the shock factor. So I'm not really a big fan of that. And the first book I didn't really enjoy because I didn't know what to expect. This time I knew what to expect. So I went in with low expectations right. and it took me two issues and I started to really enjoy this book. Great. I, so yeah. did you, so was it on like the same bar for you as in like with volume one, but you found yourself enjoying it more because you expected, you know, you knew kind of what the vibe of thing that was coming? Yeah, I mean, literally, I was turning every page just expecting to see boobs and butts and, you know, just <laughs> grossness. So when it didn't come, I was like, oh, that's nice. It's a good page. This is a good yeah. one. <laughs> um, speaking of grossness, um, so this is Amy's copy of Saga, right? So she bought this when we visited Belfast and uh, we took a plane there. And on the plane back, she was like, oh, OK, I'll, I'll tuck into this. I'll start reading it. And she was, we were sat away from each other for this, and she was sat next to a little girl, and she turned to the page. I'm not going to show it, but it was the page with the gigantic naked man Triclops. With, the, with the grotesque testicles, the grotesticles. And um, as soon as she saw that page, she was kind of like, nope. And so she couldn't read it anymore for the rest of the, <laughs> the rest of the plane ride. But that's the kind of thing, like, you literally don't know what you're going to turn the page two or like you know yeah. how the issues start i mean in one of the issues you had marco and uh alana just like, having yeah, sex yeah. on like one of the first issues um and it's like, it's like, it's like just... do you know like there's nothing wrong with sex scenes in comic books i'm oh. not a prude i don't want anyone to think i'm a prude or anything like that um and you know they were covered up they weren't anything showing they were sort of entangled with each other my problem with that scene was the language being used um it was just disgusting for the sake of disgusting <laughs> and i'm just you know I, like i really enjoy the language for me it, like it feels like slightly real it feels real the, the kind of language it feels like real people are talking and it's not <laughs> like uh, yeah it's not like controlled you know brian k vaughan isn't really thinking about like what's the best way to say this he's like look these are people in like this kind of war kind of environment and they're just um they're just trying to get through life you know they might not have had the best upbringing so they're just chatting as as if they're just normal people that's like and that's how yeah. i found it they just it's just nice and real um I can see that. I can. Um, and it's fine if you sparingly, but it's every issue. You know, the language these people use is just, it's just too, it's a bit much for me. But for me personally, yeah. that's, that's why fine. I prefer the issue, like the one that just, the Will, Gwendolyn, you know, Lion Cat, that issue was perfect. Yeah. You know, there was, there was one cool scene issue. in it. It was fantastic. Yeah, it yeah. was, oh, yeah, my favourite issue, hands down. I, I want the will. I don't want to read about Elena and Marco. I couldn't care less. I could not care less <laughs> about them. I don't even care if their kid survives. I really don't care. I want the will. I want Gwendolyn. I want Lion Cat and I want Slave Girl. That's the story I want. That's yeah. my saga. It's, I don't want the rest of it. It's a cool part. Like, yeah. Um, let's jump in some comments first. So Connie says she didn't read volume one in time to read volume two. So she's here just a Lucky listen. girl. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, hopefully you will enjoy this and you will continue to read. Uh, Glenn is exactly the same there as well. Um, he did try, Don, though. I think he read the first yeah. three issues, so uh, he tried. Okay. <laughs> you can follow us a little bit. Um, so Dominic said he, he read the first handful of trades years ago and he didn't reread to prep for today, but he's curious to see what he remembers. Um, and he does agree about the vulgarity comments. Uh, if he had a slightly less expli explicit version of Saga... Uh, it would unquestionably be one he recommended to everyone. I will tell you, there is a slightly less... Um, I don't know what happened, but if you download the second volume, um, they have taken out what Elena says to Marco while they're having sex. That page is ah, missing. I, yes. Right. Okay. So, All right. Cool. Nice. And uh, he also uh, slow claps for my <laughs> coined word of grotesticles. That's How is that not your screen name? <laughs> How did you not go with Grotesticals? <laughs> I might just change it when you're talking. Um, the noob is in. Hi, Sean. How you doing? Evening. Uh, the fuzzy Dunlop is in. Oi, oi, peeps. <laughs> everyone's um, favourite tennis ball. Everyone's favourite <laughs> tennis ball. Uh, yeah, Glenn says it, it does feel, uh, like I said, to help sell the books. You know, sex sells. And he's only into chapter four. Lol. Um, yes, and he's uh, noob is surprised at your name choice there. You thought it would be the other way around. 
<laughs> so for anyone, any, any, everyone listening on the podcast, um, my name is Marco Polo. Marco is spelt in the way that the main character Marco is. And Shane's is more Will, less Willy. <laughs> Great. This is just um, for the book. In real life, it's the other way around. <laughs> right. I, th- I feel like we've kind of veered off a bit because we haven't said anything about the art, really. Yes. So um, I, same with the first one. I'm I'm not a massive fan of the art. It's it's nice and it's serviceable. And um, I find when the characters are just standing there talking, it's lovely. Like the, yeah. when Gwendolyn shows up, her face is stunning. Like she is mm-hmm. just like hands down the most beautiful character in the book. Um, and when they're still and they're just talking to each other, it's lovely. But when there's an action scene, it doesn't seem like there's much movement. I thought I, like it was really weird, especially with the wheel when he's having the fight with those like they were like mole shrimp people. Oh yeah, and he's got his like those whip lance animals, out. Those... Anyway, sorry. Are they? Yeah, like, they're gross. real. Like, yeah, you you can get moles which have those kind of things on the end of their nose yeah it's like a hand animals. at the end of the nose yeah it's gross but his whip plants with which should look really <laughs> cool go. in motion yeah it just looked like he was just standing there just holding it it was just very static yeah I've, i yeah i totally get you there and i feel like it kind of they kind of rely on sound effects being written out because the first time he sends it out it goes clack 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 you know what i mean to, yes. to show that it's kind of extending and that for me was you know that kind of made it more uh, moving and visual for me, like even though it's sound. But yeah, I totally yeah. know what you mean. If you didn't have that, those sound effects, it would it would look static and you know not not very. You know, sometimes you need some a bit of blur. You know what I mean? Or maybe yeah, yeah. something to make it look like it's moving. I totally yeah, know what absolutely. You mean. Um, I do have one question: Is it the same artist on the cover as it is on the inside? Because the covers are absolutely stunning. Hmm. Let me have a look. Because um, I mean, I like I have bought one comic. I have one saga issue, and it's this one right here. I think so, mate. I think it's all Fiona Staples. Because well, then she knows how to draw the male form. Because this cover, <laughs> I, I did have to buy this as soon when I was reading the book, and I saw issue nine. I was like, yeah, I have to have the physical copy of that cover wow, because my nice. gosh, is. That a handsome chappy. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing, I think my favourite part of this art, like throughout the book, was how, was the magic. Just looking at the magic throughout this book. Like you had, you know, the red lightning coming down um, from Marco and from Gwendolyn later in the book. Um, just little like orange glows and the, when the, the vines from the ship are being made to hold bar, like, up, you know, away from Alana and Hazel and stuff. Definitely, yeah, definitely looking at the ma- magic in in the book. That was my favorite part to see uh, visually. Yeah, yeah it's done. the colors are fantastic. They're, uh, hands down, I can't. There's nothing I can say about the colors in a negative way. Fantastic colors because yeah. there's a page which is just it's like the rocket ship and it's like the stars behind and there's like it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, can't complain. And the faces are great. Like I say, it's just that movement yeah. thing for me. Yeah. It's just very static throughout. Yeah. Fuzzy is coming in saying he's never read Saga and only here after seeing your Instagram post, Shane, today. That's <laughs> well, a weird I'm glad Instagram they got post. you over here. <laughs> <laughs> to see those and then go, that looks interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Glenn says he's, his first time is reading it today. Perpetual Comics. Hi, Andy. How you doing? Where's the beard when he's asking? Um, he's out watching the football. That's, yeah. that's where it is. is that Apparently where his priorities are completely off. Yeah, I mean, it goes you know. podcast, family, then football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, character designs I loved. There was a, there was a few that I really enjoyed. Um, I liked I liked the kind of animalistic ones more. You know the, the medical mouse? The medical <gasps> mouse person? Oh, don't you? Then, don't. Don't. So, you just got like, me there. So there's kind of like a flashback dream kind of thing, isn't it, from Prince Robot the Fourth, and he kind of needs medical attention, and he's getting help by this humanoid person with a really cute mouse, like a dormouse type face, and um, he gets he get he explodes because he inhaled gas. Um, and they didn't they didn't give the medic a mask. They've all got masks, the <laughs> bastards. And they didn't give the medic a mask. It was so sad. Yeah. But I I, I love the design on, on that yeah. character. And then 
the tiny little seal man. <laughs> oh in my the final God, issue. So adorable. That was the cutest <laughs> thing ever. It was adorable. Um, so adorable. Did you bring bottles? He likes it when women bring bottles. <laughs> yeah. It was just it was just sweet, wasn't it? That, that was a yeah. good character. But then yeah, like and, and what you said earlier about Gwendolyn, I totally agree. Like she was like mm. she was stunning. Um yeah. definitely the best looking character in, in the story. Yeah, um, there's a full page spread there's like a full page panel mm-hmm. of her. And she's yeah, like, it was like looking right at the camera, like no, sorry, right at the camera. It's not a picture, but you know what I mean. Right, looking right at you, yeah. and it's just full face, and she's just stunning. There it is, yeah. Look, she looks awesome. Yeah, she looks so cool. Yeah, and the, the, but the face is so beautifully drawn, and that's what I'm saying. When they're standing still, it's absolutely lovely. Yeah, but then movement, the, the just the yeah, drawing, just for the me, lines are that's a bit, just a personal yeah. preference. Yeah, that's fair enough. Fred Hall Direct Edition. He's watching, apparently. Hello. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Hello. That's great. <laughs> um, shall we move on to the pages, or should we go and see what Phil has said? Yeah, let's check what Phil said. Okay, so this is what Phil has said. I'm going to try and pause it and interact with what he's done. So, Shane, would you mind pausing it when this room is ready to be paused? No? Uh, I can try. Okay, but let's go. Very technical. Common thing. This isn't the first time I've, I've been only able to make the show. It's, it's not going to be a regular thing, I do promise. But once again, life has got in the way. Yeah. Um, God, God, I look so scraggly and disheveled. I haven't slept in three days, but whatever. Um, listen, Saga, Volume 2. First thoughts, and on the art, I thought, I thought this book was fantastic. I, better than the first. Um, even though I don't necessarily feel like the story has uh traveled much in terms of they're still alana and marco are still kind of on the run of their daughter people are still chasing them there's no conclusion or anything that they're in they're no further on they're just kind of getting further away from from their, their would-be captors but um in terms of character development this was superb um i love relationships in books and Alana and Marco are just fantastic. Like they, they belong together. They they are the great couple, I think. Um I mean you've got uh Robot or Prince Robot the Fourth. His character's fantastic because you got this thing where you almost feel like there's a bit of nobility in him, like he's you know, he's doing things for the right reason, he's gonna be a new father, but he's still chasing these down and you kinda of think like he could be good, but then he goes and attacks the the writer of the book that inspired Alana to fall in love with Margo. It's weird, but um, yeah. And then the person who's on the blower to him all the time, Gail, what an asshole. And yeah, I just think this book, I mean, Isabel was great. Margo's parents were great. I just loved it. I, I just, for, for a part two of this series, I'm you know, more invested than I was in the first one. I really enjoyed the first one, but for me, I thought. Okay, let's pause it there. So, yeah. uh, we so he talked about the relationship um, between Marco and Alana. That was, I love it. Like there was one particular panel which nearly had me crying, um, and it was where it was just Bar and Alana. Um, they're just alone together, and. Um, it was the like you know she was like your son is beautiful and he's like well looks on everything and she goes no no i mean on the inside and i saw that and i was like oh my god like that was amazing um i was like oh my god it's so good um but yeah you know the, yeah yeah the relationship building's great as much as i don't care about them it was done really well like if i did care about them i would care <laughs> even more now yeah but i the problem is I, I just don't care. I know it's a horrible thing to say, but even the first issue did it for me. I just, I don't like the character of Alana. She's just a horrible, unlikable, bossy, vulgar, horrid creature that I just don't want anything to do with. And Marco right. is such a nice guy and he's just like being dragged around by her. I find that I don't, I don't like it personally. Right. That's me. All right. I can see why people do, but not yeah. for me. All right, fair enough. Well, let's see what else he said. Well, this was fantastic. But the art style, I mean, I don't know. If I recall in the first volume, we all kind of agreed where 
the art was good, but it doesn't have straight lines. The bit, you know, a bit sh not shabby like in a bad way, but purposely kind of shabby in certain areas. But I thought th the art was pretty consistent throughout, and there were some real jaw dropping moments that were that were drawn beautifully uh, throughout. So the page I picked is odd as well. So I have this. This is like the first three volumes. And I reread book one or volume one and then book two. And I actually read volume three as well. I'm sold on this. And I'm going to join all the other miserable saga fans. I'll complete this series. And I'm waiting how many years it takes for Brian K. Vaughan and, and Fiona Staples to get to finish the book, even though there's only 54 issues to go, so I mean, that's like five years before I get to buy the last of these kind of book, these collecting books. But sure, it's so so good. The page I picked is from issue 12, and I'll show it here somewhere, but I'll also uh send it to stream yards so the boys can put it on and, and talk about it if they want. It's it's the part where uh, Robot the Fourth is um he's injured and a medic comes to him in the form of like a mouse or a rat i don't know one of the two and um she's obviously really nice like she's really cool like straight away like you know calls him handsome and you know you know calls him cute and bet you use that line on every girl you meet like you can tell she's obviously interested but just being kind of joyful or whatever and and then this gas appears and um she doesn't get a mask like you know maybe she's fighting for the wrong people or serving for the wrong people they don't give her a mask so she's like wait am i dying am i going up and then just pops like it's grotesque without being <laughs> grotesque if you know what i mean like at the end of the day a living body exploded um, because of this gas, but it's not, it's not cutesy, but it's not dark either. It's just, it's, I don't know, it's just odd, but I, I just thought that was, that was quite a, not a funny page. It's, I should laugh, I shouldn't be laughing at that. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was cool, and that, that's the page I picked. The art throughout, I thought, was completely consistent. There wasn't anything I didn't like. Um maybe the only thing i didn't really like the character design of that woman i can't remember her name the purple lady with the gold hat on sextillion but i think she's in volume one so can't really talk about that as in a negative for this book but yeah yeah art was fantastic and we're off to a good start on this volume great awesome. yeah yeah, he picked a good page. He picked. What are the chances you were talking about that? I know. Like, like I know he's got the page there, but I haven't. I haven't looked at what he's chosen, so I was quite surprised that no. uh, that was brought up. Shall we go on to the pages while we're here? Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah. Can we get? We can get a closer look at Phil's pick. Yeah, let's do Phil's again. There we go. So that's what yeah. we were talking about earlier. Because uh, it's uh, not. That's not one of the pages that is like shock factor for shock factor. You know, that is. That's part of the story. It tells the story. It's not what i have a problem with from some of the other pages and it's just heartbreaking like she's yeah. there to help she's there to help them she's fighting or she's helping them in the war and they couldn't even just give her a mask it just shows like what scum they are yeah i know we'll put this up as well just in case uh <laughs> yes so um yeah do you want to do your page yeah yeah so, um I bet it's not what you think it's going to be. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dominic Dominic is uh, saying that page is so sick and all. Uh, oh, shock. No, shock and all, you said. That's shock and all, yeah. <laughs> and then he goes, well, a little sick. <laughs> yeah. But but in a good way. Yeah. Uh, Chris, I think he's going opposite to you, Shane. Um, polar opposite for Lana. Like, brash over the top, uh, cringingly disgusting, but she's loyal and upfront. She would destroy reality for the people she loves, and I love her for that. So you've got some fair. contrasting opinions That's there. Nice. Absolutely fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can, I, okay. she, I know she would kill anyone for Marco. She would. Yeah. So here is yours. So here's my page, because it's made me the saddest. Because I was, I was ready to not read on if the next page was not someone saving lying. <laughs> when he well, gets the next page the only after one... this was the end of the issue. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I was going to read the first page of the next issue. Yeah. I was I was fuming. I was like, he's the only one that gets sucked out of the ship. And I was like, now he's in space. I don't know if this alien cat can breathe in space or survive in space. Yeah. But then you get the will is like on it. Like he's just, he doesn't even think about his own safety. He's just bounces yeah. off the wall and goes straight out it. after her. Yeah. And it's really? like, it was, yeah, really good. And they set up like his, um, his extendable whip lance. Yeah. The, the like two issues before. So when he uses it in this, it makes perfect sense. You know, mm. it's not just this magic tool that he pulls out to save the day. We yeah. already know he's got it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, set up really well. And also look at the colours in the background. I know it's just red and black, but look at it. It's, it's moody, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah, isn't it? It's yeah. like, it's dark and vast and yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Because it wouldn't um, have the same impact if it was like purples and yellows and blues and all bright and happy colours in the background. Yeah. Glenn says there, when there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Like, it's a really cool base. That was my second. I was gonna be my. I was my second choice. That was, um, and I remember like I was I sat with Amy when uh, I was reading that, and it was kind of like I saw that, and I was like, I just showed it to her, and I was like, oh my god, what the hell? And she was like, yeah, I know, I know. I was like, oh my god, I really hope he comes back. Like, I really hope, like, oh, she's sorry, I really hope she's not dead. Um, so yeah, but, like, thankfully, thankfully, Will did save her, and that is that is great, definitely. Yeah. Um, he did it in style and made it look so easy, didn't he? Oh, yeah. It was <laughs> just like, so right, cool. just jump off, grab the cat, lance back, off I go, done. And then, so and, cool. then and then Gwendolyn uses a spell then. What I love about the spells is uh, you, they has to be, they has to pretty much lose something, don't they? So, like, so for that spell, she scratched her face, didn't she? To yeah. Kind of get like this kind of, but they don't tell you what this is happening. And this is definitely no. like very like visual for us to pick up on. And if we don't pick up on it, then then we don't pick up on it. Like, and yeah, then... I think Marco told us in the first volume, didn't he, that you have yeah. to do. But then that's yeah. it. Yeah, like you say, they just do it. Yeah, like but that, that, he had to tell that... that secret. Yeah, because that was quite confusing though, because Elena had him tied up with the vines, and then she says to him about like I don't have any secrets for you to, to do a spell to get yeah, out. Like, so why like, would so she have to give a doesn't... secret? It doesn't have to be, if you want to do the spell, it doesn't have to be your secret. It just has to be a secret. That's the cost. The cost so is one secret. you tell someone else's secret. Well, no, no. Some, someone has to tell the secret around you, I think, to oh, okay. to be, you know, yeah, for, for it to work. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, should we move on to my pick? So, yeah, this, yeah. Was, this is my number one pick. And there's this double page spread of this of this kind of... I keep calling it the Planet Baby. Um, was, it the, was it a Time Eater? Yes, that was the name. Yeah, a Time Eater. So basically, for anyone who hasn't read it, this uh, this child, toddler, baby thing is inside a planet. and But it wasn't actually a planet. It's just an egg that people kind of thrived and lived on um, until this was ready to hatch. And I just <laughs> love the kind of enormity of this image um yeah you know you've got the ship there for kind of the, for the scale to show you how big this thing actually is and it's just massive and i like i have no idea what it is um and it just looks it just looks great and i like this was again another another page when i got to it i turned it to amy and i was like oh my god because you know she's read all this already and i'm like what the hell this is so cool like, yeah, yeah i know keep keep reading <laughs> i was like it's just i just loved it it was great um, yeah, I mean, when you find out that the planet that they're on is an actual egg, mm. and it's like getting ready to hatch, you're like, this this is a like a civilization. Like, there's buildings, there's people. This is a whole world that's like that just came to life on the shell of an egg. How did that yeah. happen? How long has that egg been? I know, you know, getting ready, and then they're all just gone in an instant. The witch is obviously dead. Like the yeah, Mac, the like the witches from Macbeth. The that yeah. um, oh. What's the ghost called? The half girl ghost. The half ghost Isabel. girl. Isabel. That's it. Yeah. yeah. When she comes in as the giant gorilla. And yeah. she's like, that's it. Run, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was great. Yeah. Uh, Dominic's coming in there saying the egg planet was a fun twist. It was a fun yeah. twist. Definitely was. There's a lot of cool twists in there. Um, but I feel like. Oh, Pan... I just realized it, 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 it wasn't going to hatch, was it? Wasn't it the explosion that hatches the planet? Or was that. 
after did they attack you know when the will and gwendolyn attack elena and marco yeah had it already hatched yes so the missile oh, it... went straight into it yeah that's right yes you... yeah um so yeah uh liam's coming in saying the question shane should be asking is why did bar's secret work they said it had to be a secret no one else knew but bar's doctor knew <laughs> <laughs> ah, don't do this uh, go away <laughs> maybe bar was his own doctor maybe, he, knows me. maybe yes that's right. Maybe he did a spell to see if there was anything wrong with him, and it was all private. Yes, very private. Maybe, who knows? We'll never know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Time's getting a bit ahead of us now. Should we go ahead and see what oh, Phil wow. thinks about the story? Yes. Yeah, all right. The, the writing and, and, and the story, as I mentioned when I opened up here, like I just thought it was tremendous. The... Uh, it's the relationships between all, between all the characters and the dynamics between them all that I absolutely love. I, I thought, I mean, even if you consider like the Will, the Will who in the first volume did not like, um, he has he loved her, but he had this relationship where he didn't want to be with the, with the stock, stock. And then once he's dead, he's, he's grieving and he wants to seek revenge. Like, I love that kind of like breakdown of him and him kind of moping about. And then obviously, he gets this motivation to go save the, the slave girl off Sextillion as well. I mean, you have that. I thought it was great. Again, Marco and Alana. I mean, I, I could talk a lot about Marco and Alana. I just think their relationship's really like, uh, without being soppy, it's like true love. Like, so she's. Um, lives in landfill. He lives on reef. You know, she lives on the planet. He lives on a, a satellite, a moon, and they shouldn't be together. Obviously, it's the whole book's about so far. But their relationship's fantastic. Obviously, they have a lot of sexual tension between the two of them. Um, and obviously, you've seen that later on. But some of the language that was used between the two of them, like, um, it, it's almost like they're they're sticking on each other, but in a kind of cutesy way, like. Uh, I think of the scene whenever they they made love and he did his thing inside and <laughs> then they were talking about having a child and, and he was like I always wanted to call my first son Bar and she turns right and says um uh, like like a tavern like a soap and it's just like like not in a way like she's being silly kind of questions it's like you want to call your son after a tavern or a soap it's, it's so stupid I, I just quite like that dynamic between the two. And yeah, I, th I think it was great. Um, I, I like the kind of inclusion of um, Gwendolyn. I think she's going to um, really test this couple. And I really enjoyed that. And uh, uh, she's like a scorn lover out for revenge. And uh, but she's, she's, she's a really good character too. She's kind of obviously kind of out for blood. And she was one of the blast that uh, Miss I love her even really thinking about it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I loved it. Another really so yeah, Gwendolyn was one of my uh favorite well, yeah, the only addition to this book really, wasn't it? But it was such a good addition to the story. Um yeah. you know, I all like before I read it, I was thinking about all the characters that are already in this story. You know, you've got Marco, Alana, Hazel, Bar, uh Marco's mother, I can't remember the name. Um, you got Will, you got the slave girl. Um, and then all these other side characters, like like Will's like agent, you know what I mean, who gets him the jobs and everything. There's so many characters, and then I was like, do I want another main character? And you know, and then Gwendolyn came in, and I was like, all right, okay, let's let's see how it goes. Like Gwendolyn, <laughs> Gwendolyn for another character was a great choice because we already know about her from Volume One, being the ex-wife or ex-fiance of Marco, yeah. and. Uh, so instantly, as soon as you see her and you know her name is Gwendolyn, you're already thinking she is out to get Marco. And like you're thinking, like, what the hell is going on? What is she planning? Why is she here? Um, yeah. And you realize that she was the person who originally set the job out in the first place, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was great. I mean, so uh, Dominic, you saying the dialogue is strong. Yes, it is. It is strong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fuzzy there i'd like phil to give me the birds and the bees chat <laughs> 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 what 
when a, when a man does his thing then a woman is there you know that's like, um, yeah so chris is there uh gwen is awesome loved it yeah we yeah. did as well she is really cool um yeah and i completely agree with dominic here he says vaughn brian k vaughn is so good at characterization completely agree Car- yep can't like, argue there all of everyone has such a distinct personality yeah you could you could have no images on the screen and you could just have text and you would know who is speaking to who yes by yeah. the way they all speak and yeah it's really good it is good i'm not gonna yeah. lie it was great as much okay. as i hated volume one and i really hated volume one because it was such a shock um but being prepared for that i did really enjoy this i mean the final issue it i feel like it was tacked on like mm. it could have ended at the you know the space battle with the ship flying away like that could have been it but that last issue was fantastic apart yeah. from the first two pages that issue was absolutely fantastic i really enjoyed that the first two pages oh yeah. <laughs> right Okay, the images enough. on the robot's face, which, which were not needed at all, they were not needed. Again, oh, it's just there for the shock. Yeah, it could have been a sad emoji face. It could have been an emoji with the X's over the eye. It could have been anything. They just weren't needed. It was no. just there for the sake, and that sort of thing. They're trying to. Com- they again, they've confused mature with adult. You know, a mature magazine is you know a motor, a fishing magazine or something like that. An adult book is a porno mag. There's they're two different things. There's mature and there's adult. Can't and this be a mature adult book? Well, that it's trying to be, and it's just uh, it's a bit it's a bit much. Take that out, and that was yeah. a great issue. I really enjoyed that issue. Yeah, I completely agree. And, but and I'm so so glad because one of my biggest pet peeves with the first one is Will left Slave Girl on Sextillion in Volume One. And I was so annoyed. And the fact that he just goes and gets her straight away in this one, I was like, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad they didn't drag that on. And that was like five volumes down. I'm glad they just got that out of the way and saved her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tyler's here. Hey, everyone. And he said he loves Saga. Good. And he must be happy. Phil's not here. (laughs) (laughs) Let us know what you think about Saga, Tyler. It'd be great to hear your opinions. Let's carry on with what Phil had to say. Relationship that was beautiful. So Marco's parents came back, or came because uh, they thought he was maybe injured because he broke a sword, of course, to fly off. And um, yeah, so what happens is that Marco then has to leave to go save Isabel, uh, the babysitter, and his mum goes with him. So um, his dad stays with uh, Alana and the baby. And like, I really liked how they got on. Like it's almost as if you would you would imagine like the dad, he probably grown up was hard on Marco, a real hard ass, but he really softens. Like I think things obviously Alana is a good, a fancy sees Alana as a good thing for his son, and obviously meets his granddaughter, and kind of like falls in love with her. And, um, I I love seeing that because obviously he looks like this big warrior, but really he's a big softy, and um, I mean he. he he makes garments so um <laughs> yeah seamstress loved that relationship as well there were other things that brand cave ones obviously included in this story that i think just adds to the overall world building of it like things like the the communicator necklaces so they don't all speak the same language but they have this kind of communicator that allows everyone to understand and, and speak or whatever each other's language or whatever um i love the fact that these engagement rings that Marco gave to Alana used to belong to Gwendolyn and somehow they're able to trace them through that. It sounds silly, but I really, really liked it. Marco as well, like his magic really kind of branched out a bit more because from the first fall, you kind of, you know, you know, he has magic and, and you know, he's, he's a warrior for the Moonies, but obviously he's unwilling to fight anymore. And, but then at the end of volume one, when he did kick some ass, you thought, well, that's his, obviously his, his, his main thing. But then throughout this, as you see little bits of magic that he's able to do, which obviously tells him that's his strength. And I, I really like that. I think I mentioned in the, for, in the video for the first volume about the things that Brian K. Vaughan was including. Like, he just kind of thought to himself, what's outrageous that like, he's including this book, but make it work? But he's not again here. Like, the kind of idea that there are, 
from this planet that then hatches them some sort of I don't even know why would you think of that? Like that's that's you know that's outrageous. And then also on this planet stroke egg lives this guy with um dare I say a really cheesy ball sack. Um, <laughs> why? Like it, it it's like he's adding things in and it's borderline silly. It works. It adds to the whole kind of uh, uh, like you know the atmosphere, but it adds it adds to the kind of the book. It adds to everything. The world building. It's it's fantastic. Um, I also love the emotion in the book. Now, there was quite a few emotional moments. Obviously, with the will, and he was grieving and stuff, and he was having these nightmares that you know that uh, him and and the stock went and saved the slave girl. I thought that was great. Um, I, I love the point as well when. The will and the lion cat, their ship was kind of damaged, and they had kind of the lion cat kind of fallen out of the ship, and it looked like she was going to just float off and die in space. And also, he saves her because that's his partner, you know, that's his his sidekick, as he calls as he, as he calls it. And um, obviously, the emotion with with Marco's dad, Dan, who I can't remember his name, which I should bar, that's the one. And um, that was quite sad. And then with the dad dying, so. Marco had referred to his dad, and sorry, the dad had referred to him like he was never the best dad. He was always loyal to the mom and never the best father he could be. And whenever he died, the first thing you see is Marco's kind of um, uh, memory of him as a young child. And, you know, they were talking in their language, and you can't really obviously make out what it is. We don't know it, but you can make you can understand kind of what they're talking about. Like he falls off this giant grasshopper and his dad's encouraging him to never not give up. But then he succeeds and flies off the grasshopper and they're all cheering and laughing. It's great. Like that's the first thing Marco thinks when, he's, when his dad died. And I thought that was beautiful. Like anyone reading this book, like you could probably argue that it borderlines being vulgar. And um, obviously it references things like uh pedophilia and child sex slaves um i think that was done well in terms of you know the girl was saved eventually and and obviously the will who's this big bad freelancer bounty hunter um like he sees that as a priority i gotta get her out of there and i that was good but in terms of like the fulgur and the language like i'm gonna say it because it's in the book so i'm not Cursings for the sake of cursing, but I wrote some lines down which I thought were hilarious. So whenever they ha- were having sex, <laughs> pardon me, and um, Marco does his thing, and the question like, "Why did you do that inside?" and um, he then gets up and says, "Well, did you not enjoy it?" and she's like, "I came like a dump truck, hence the name <laughs> dump truck down here." And um, Marco goes, "Actually, you've said, please shoot it in my twat." Uh. Like the language used, it's like it's it's not it is vulgar, but I think in this in the in the sense that it's used in this story, it almost works like it adds to their relationship because it's it's adding a bit of reality to it, you know, that the couples do have this back and forth banter and you know these kind of problems and it's it's making it real or something. I'm, I'm talking nonsense. I just I quite like the way it was included, even though it is vulgar, essentially. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Well, it's Glenn in the book. That. Yeah. He's right. It's in the book, so yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Well, like I say, I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit much. I found for that me. funnier in an Irish accent than the oh, accent absolutely. I was reading it in. Um, yeah, I wish he would have. I, if if <laughs> Phil had read this book to me, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, yeah, we're we're running low on time, and there's still so much more I want to talk about. Yeah. Um, you know, like so, Phil touched on um, the relationship between Bar and Alana, which was absolutely fantastic, and how it just kind of naturally uh, changed and adjusted, so they actually understood each other, and they knew, you know. You know, no one's a threat. You know, like they just they, they all just want the best for Hazel and the family and that kind of thing. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And then I really liked the the whole thing about what Phil said with the world building and the artifacts and the kind of the fact that we had all of these totally odd 
creatures and characters, but no one bats an eyelid. Like you had the henchmen with eyes for nipples and their belly button was a tongue. And yes. it's like, it's like, um, but the thing is, I looked at that and I'm like, yeah, it looked weird, but I didn't think it looked out of place. And I think the fantastic no. thing that Brian K. Vaughan had done was, was, you know, created all of these things on different planets. So we can't say, well, that's not realistic because I have no idea what's realistic on that kind of planet. And I think that's the kind of clever thing that he's done there. Um, yeah, he's, he's grown the world slowly as well, which is great. Rather than like, do you remember yeah. Monstrous, like where they just bombarded us? Yeah, they world did. building, world building, world building. Yeah. This is just done in such a calm way that you yeah. take everything in, you understand everything and you retain it. Like you say, when um, Gwendolyn did the spell, you knew she scratched her face because you have to give something up because yeah. you retained that information because you would drip fed it rather than just, you just didn't get a pie in the face of world building. <laughs> Here's yeah. how all of the spells work. Go, 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 go. Remember <laughs> exactly. It. Um, yeah, like yeah, I totally agree. Um, but I, I definitely said this in the when we, when we reviewed Volume One. It was um, the fact that like he's so good at like world building, but he hasn't just built one world. He's building all of these different worlds and all of these different places, but he's just doing tiny bits of each of these worlds so we're not you know learning about the whole thing but we're just learning about little chunks of these little worlds yeah. getting a vibe getting a feel and just seeing like these different environments and cool places and then we may never never see them again but but i will always remember the little steel man i'll never forget the little steel man he was adorable i loved him um, <laughs> if there's a toy of that anywhere i want it <laughs> just... what was it he didn't even have a name did he bless him oh, i just loved him i just loved him um so yeah, do you want to say anything else now before we go on to final thoughts and scores? No, I think we've covered pretty much everything yeah. that I've wanted to say. Yep, check, check, yeah. check, check, check. <laughs> I think I think the only other one one thing I want to say is like, I think the reason this story feels like it goes so smoothly and like calmly is because we've got three different stories effectively, don't we? You know, we had Alana and Bar, we had Marco and his mother. And we had Will, Gwendolyn, and Slave Girl, and, and Lion Cat. So we had all these three different stories. And they all converged at one point, but they weren't really aware that they were each other. And that, yeah. like it was it was all really cool, but nothing felt rushed. And then you had the final issue where Prince Robot the Fourth comes to see the writer of that book that they were that seemed to be the main focus of this whole volume was this shit book that they were yeah, like propaganda you know, yeah who invested in um <laughs> and then you know so like everyone is pretty much together now apart from the fact that the will isn't there um and it's just yeah it's just how all of these stories are inter intertwining but nothing is feeling forced or um it all feels like natural. this is how it should go natural and yeah yeah, yeah i really enjoy it um Ah, uh -huh, we've got a name, Gus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that makes it. Is that real? Or is he better. taking the piss? I don't know. Can you just can you actually confirm it? I would love it. If name <laughs> Gus. Um, so Glenn's asking. So the story has a long way to go. Yes, I mean this is a nine-volume story. Uh, if you want to talk about it. In Oh, right. There we go. We're back. Are you there? What happened I'm there? Here. Did I disappear or did you disappear? We both did, I think. Oh. I think we both disappeared, but it's okay. <laughs> We're back. Everything's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so before we have any more technical difficulties, let's go on to the final thoughts and scores. And let's uh, let's talk about Phil's first. Guys, in the chat, you know the score by now. Uh, if you've read the book, let us know uh, a little bit what you thought about it and a score, and we will go ahead and... Uh, total all of that up. So let's go ahead and see what Philip thought. So my final thoughts on scores. Folks, I really loved this so much more than the first volume. And literally every character is so interesting. 
whether they're cool or whether they're characters I like, or I just think they're assholes. Like every character, like I say, the Will, the Stock, uh, Gwendolyn, Marco, Alana, Isabel, Barr, and Marco's mom, what's coming by her name. But they, they all add to the story and the kind of idea that Marco and Alana are in opposite paths, but they obviously come together for one. And like Prince Rule, what the fourth, like he, again, there's question marks over him. Is he, is he good? Is he bad? But the book was fantastic. Um, as I said earlier, that I have re reread volume one and read right through to the, this first book I have. Uh, so that's the first three volumes. I'm going to read on as well for for the next six volumes after that, <laughs> because I think that in my in this, I want to see, I want to get up to date with it, and again, wait the years it's going to take for for these guys to get these books out in total. Um, love, I love the art. I think it looks really well. I think the facial expressions as well are really good. Alana has quite a few that. You can almost like see the emotion in her eyes. I quite like that. Again, the dynamic dynamic of the story and how the volume two ended um was just really cool. And it, as a reader, that makes you want to read on. Obviously, it's a, it's not a cliffhanger, but it's like you gotta read on. You gotta see what happens now. We're now further along the story. The the, the people chasing them are now close as they're ever gonna be without actually getting them. And yeah, I'm I, I I love this. Really did love it. So, my score to 10, and I can't remember what I gave volume 1. I think it's quite high. But I did not give it... This is a 9.5 for me. Ooh. This is fantastic. The story is fantastic. Loved it. And maybe my score might be skewed because I've read the whole thing now. Like these first three volumes. Possibly. But I, I knew from reading volume 2... That I loved it straight away. This was great. Fully recommend it. 9.5 out of 10. Don't at me. <laughs> Love yous. <laughs> Don't at me. So there we go. 9.5 for Phil. Wow. I mean, that was. Um, he loved it. Right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, what did you think? Um, like I said, going into this one, I knew what to expect. So I enjoyed this a lot more than the first one. Um, I. Like I say, it took me two issues, really. I was still down on it on the first one. And then the second issue, it was okay. And then the third, that's it, I was sold. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this. And I, I ignored the vulgar parts, the gross parts, the bits that were there for no reason. I, I'm able to, it was, they're, they're just one page, you know, or one or two pages, so you can ignore that. So I'm fine with it. The art, like I said, really nice. Just a bit of a problem with the motion. Again, you can overlook yeah. that when you're enjoying the story. I do want to read more of the wheel, and I would love a wheel and stalk side call, back, you know, <laughs> prequel story, whatever you want to give me. Like... And I will definitely read on with him. Um, I would read on actually because Good. I want to know what happens to the wheel. I would probably skim over the rest of the book oh, okay. if I'm honest and just read the wheels parts. Yeah, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I didn't not enjoy it. So I'm for my pure enjoyment of reading this book it has to be an eight from me an eight from shane yep okay great um so uh so far in the comments uh we have uh dominic saying uh, i'm gonna give this eight only because of personal taste i think this could be a 10 for many people and i get it it's got great world building characters art uh, and it's, it's memorable but it's a tad too explicit for him so it's an eight out of ten uh, Glenn, yeah. I think he's slightly cheating here. He goes, I'm foreseeing a good score for this volume. I'm enjoying vo volume one halfway halfway in, so I'm going to say eight for volume two. <laughs> Do right. we take that? <laughs> okay, we'll include it. We'll include it. It's fine. Um, Leah's here. I love the art for the most part, despite the weakness on motion, the characters, the world building, the story, all written, drawn, colored fantastically. We'll definitely read on 8.5. Early bird comics. Welcome. Uh, best book I've read. There's so much more to come. Uh, you're only touching the surface. Highly recommend. 10 out of 10. Whoa. Wow. Well done. Thank you very much. And Chris is going. He says, I'm going to go with Dump Truck 9.5. <laughs> uh, send me this adding Chris's score there. Uh, so 
Um, before I let you guys know what score you've given it, I'll go ahead and let you know what I thought. Um, this was fantastic. I mean, I think it was because we're now so we're now used to the characters, we can now get to scratch the surface about them, you know, and more as people. We get their history, we get Alana and uh, Marco's history, like how they started their relationship. Um, and, you know, we get this whole family dynamic and and then you get you get this new kind of this team up kind of thing with the Will and Gwendolyn and Slave Girl and he's kind of changed a lot since since volume one as well. Um, so all, already we're seeing this really cool character development um, and I, I just felt like this whole thing is just a very mature story that has felt very natural um, even though it is immensely out of this world literally like how can brian k vaughan think of this universe pretty much it is like he has a fantastic mind for thinking of all of this stuff be it gross be it beautiful like whatever he's thought of for this story so far i'm loving it and it's absolutely brilliant um there's so many worlds and cultures and ideals and morals and all of these different people just conflicting and you've got all this history um, between the Moonies and uh, Alana's race and I just, I'm just i just absolutely loving this um, and I'm really pleased that everyone else is liking it. I'm really pleased you're enjoying it now. Um, so yes, I think... I'm, I'm going to go in between the both of you because I don't think it's quite as high as a 9.5. Like, we're on volume two. There's seven more to go. I'm really hoping there's room to go to grow. And I'm hoping at least one of these volumes will be 10 out of 10 worthy. Um, so this, for me, um, I'm going to give it a nine. Oh, that's, that's what it is for me. So it's a nine for me. Uh, okay, so in with you guys, with the viewers with, in the chat... Uh, we had two eights, an 8.5, a 9.5, and a 10, which averages out to a whopping score of 8.8 .8 between the, the five people that gave a score. And then between the three of us, Phil gave it a 9.5, uh, Shane, you gave it an 8, and I gave it a 9, which averages us out to 8.8. .8. So we've Ooh. literally matched the audience score today, which is fantastic. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how we did on the leaderboard. Oh, it's in the top row. It's Whoa. now pushed. Uh, it's now between the Court of Owls and Pulp. So it's now fourth place. Wow. I am uh, I'm very pleased with that. Wow. How do you feel about that? Uh, if I'm honest, I enjoyed Klaus more. I think I probably yeah. I think I scored Klaus higher, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's fine. I, I'm getting there. Like you say, I'm enjoying it now. So if it if it keeps this momentum up and if it yes. keeps this this like this is a little less vulgar than this first volume. So if yeah. it slowly starts to dripple that out and it just gets rid of it by say volume five, I'll be really happy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so yes, uh, that's been the show. Um, we will tell you what we've got coming up next week. So next week, we are going to be looking at Daredevil, Devil at Bay. Ooh. There we go. So that's what we're looking at. So go ahead, grab the book, give it a read, and join us next week. Um, Shane, is there anything going on on your channel this week, next week, soon, recently been? Um, the, the viewer competition on Quiz Night 11 is still active. So yes. if you head over and watch that, you can enter the competition to win a prize. Perfect. Yeah, so go on over and check that out. Um, myself, uh, last night, me and Alistair from Stormcore Collectibles did a Forbidden Planet grab bag battle. Nothing serious, just a bit of a laugh, a bit of fun. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead over to either mine or Stormcore Collectibles channels. It's on both channels. Uh, and just go ahead and watch it there. Uh, it was really good fun. Um, apart from that, I can't really start, hy start hyping up airwaves yet because we've got like two <laughs> weeks to go. So I'll just, I'll just tickle it there. There we go. Airwaves is coming in two weeks. That's what I'll let you know. But yeah, that's been us. Um, yes, thank you very much. Uh, there's nothing else to do now, is there? There's one thing. Hmm. Uh, which one do you use? Are you a lefty or a righty? I think I use my right. 
but oh. I'm going to go left today. Ooh, I usually go left. Oh, it feels oh, weird. Know. Anyway, <laughs> get your waves out. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Love you.